quickly going to seek out a deep focus on this video is mostly about about um, the treatment so quickly just gauss is the deposition of a uh, urate monosodium monosodium on the joint space could be on the olecranon bursa achilles tendon knee hip uh, okay. hip or the um, or the pelvic guard pelvic guard most of the times so is in the great toe the patient would present with a inflamed inflamed um, toe, a great toe that it is difficult to distinguish from cellulitis it could have a chalky white chalky appearance um with white discharge this is called a tophi tophi and the composition of the tophi is giant cells with macrophages and round cells um this is usually due to increased uric acid levels and this could be due to under excretion or increased production increased production would include Leishnikan syndrome uh, under production could be renal failure for example many things um the the diagnosis is made with the arthroscopy because we will aspirate the fluid of the joint we should find between 2000 and five and 50,000 uh, white blood cells per cubic millimeter um but it, it could be higher and the the diagnosis could be confirmed with could be with a MRI, mm, something like that. Anyway, uh, most of the time with the X-ray and with the levels of uric acid in the lab testing, but we we usually not always take into account the uric acid because the patient could have gout without having the elevated uric acid level. That it would be above seven point five, for example, uh, milligrams per deciliter. Um. Some of the causes of gout include a myeloproliferative disorders, leukemia, lymphoma. This would include, for example, the tumor lysis syndrome. But also, we have some pneumonia that includes, like, for this and and. Um, two L's and two S. D for diet, patients that eat a lot of red meat or alcohol, patients that are dehydrated, patients with diabetes mellitus, um, patients with diuretic use because the diuretics can inhibit the excretion, for example, the thiazide diuretics. Um, else for Leishnikan syndrome and lead poisoning. As one is for starving, starving, and the other is the salicylate. Salicylate at low dose because at, at low dose the salicylate inhibits the the uh, excretion, and at high dose they inhibit the the reabsorption. So they are. Um, uric excretion at high doses um we could also have cyclosporine for example in patients with renal transplant and remember that the uh, one of the treatments that we will give for gout is allopurinol allopurinol remember will block the xanthine oxidase enzyme that is also 
a part of the metabolism of some drug like cyclopurine and all of this. So if we block this, we would increase those um, levels of of those drugs, and so the patient could have aplastic anemia and some other toxicities. So the treatment is divided into acute treatment and chronic treatment. The acute treatment is usually NSAIDs or colchicine. But colchicine is a little bit inferior to NSAIDs. If the patient has contraindications to NSAIDs, for example, in, in renal failure, we can give corticosteroid injection. And to the chronic, we usually give allopurinol. This is only if the uric acid remains elevated or if the patient has repeated episodes of gout because the acute event will resolve also spontaneously between 3 and 14 days. Anyway, in the chronic treatment, we would give allopurinol. If the patient has contraindications to allopurinol, then we can give febuxostat that has exactly the same mechanism of action. Um, we could also give provenacid. Just that um, provenacid produces the under, um, sorry, decreases the reabsorption of uric acid. So this would be contraindicated in patients with renal stones or tophi or renal failure. And so in these cases, we should switch to other drug. We cannot use provenacid. We can use, for example, Pilbustat. And preglut case, case and transpuric case are some enzymes that make the, they are like uric case because they convert the uric acid into something that is more water soluble.